drawing moldy patterns lesson one. I'm gonna show you how to draw a rape rape. First draw a rectangle, divide it down the middle lengthways and horizontally. Keep dividing until you have eight horizontal lines. Draw an S in the middle, extend the ends of your S in a circular motion, following the lines around to keep it even. Once your curve reaches the edges, you want to extend it out to the corners, narrowing to a curved point. Do some curved lines around the edges, keeping them roughly the same width. Make some more curves, filling up the gaps between the spiral and the edges, making sure you're flowing off the lines you've already drawn. I now you gotta line it. You don't have to, but I like to add shading, it hides my shakiness when I try to do these precise drawings. Um, these patterns are commonly seen on carving, so dimension is good, and you should end up with something like this. Do it, and use a sound, I'm keen to see how you go. I'm going to show you another way to draw a rape rape. Again, start with your rectangle, divide it down the middle lengthways and horizontally. Divide again so that you have thirds with a slightly smaller section in the middle. Keep dividing horizontally so you have eight horizontal parts. Draw two S's at the top and two backwards S's at the bottom. Extend the ends of those S's out, narrowing to a point at the corners and connecting the two S's and backwards S's together. Make curved lines around the edges of your rectangle, trying to keep things as even as possible. Fill in the gaps of the design with more curved lines flowing off the lines you've already drawn. Alright, now time to line and add shading. If you're interested in more, check out Michael Matcher and Nikorima NZICA on Instagram, or myself, as I will continue to break down these common patterns. Like and comment if you would like to see more, or you have specific patterns you'd like me to break down. But Māori patterns mean lesson one. The first one I'm going to show you is called a rape rape. So rape in te reo Māori means tattooing on the buttocks. So this design is derived from a form of tamoko called puhuro, which is exactly that. But is more commonly seen in carving now. It's carved on pivot points such as elbows, knees, shoulders, even cheeks to represent movement or even energy itself. A lot of Māori patterns draw on nature, and some say it is a depiction of what you would see if you were to cast a stone into a pond. It could be two individuals starting their life journey and connecting on that journey. It can represent Ranganui, the Sky Father, and Papatūnuku, the Earth Mother, embracing. Harmony is a strong element to this design. There are so many meanings and interpretations of this design, these are just a few, and check out my other video to see how to draw it. And like and comment if you are keen to learn more. How to draw Māori patterns? Lesson Rua. Hi, I'm going to show you how to draw an una unahi. It's quite similar to the rape rape, so look at my previous videos to get to this stage. What sets this design apart is its clusters of curved lines. They're usually an odd number in groups of 3 to 7. The curves that you draw should be opposite to the direction of the line, and what you do on one side you must invert on the other. Now outline and add shading if you wish. Unahunahi is mainly seen in Taitokero or northern carvings, but also commonly used by iwi with established pre-European carving traditions. Unahi translates to scales, so it's no surprise to represent fish scales and symbolises an abundance of food and wealth, both the people and the ocean. Look up master carvers such as Michael Matchett for more Māori designs, follow my Instagram, also duet and use the sound, I'm keen to see how you go. Alright, we're going to draw a punga wedewede. Very similar to the past few patterns, but there are a few things that set this design apart one of which is the centre. You want to draw a diagonal line and extend it out like we've done with the past two designs. The next steps are the same as the rape rape. The infills are another thing which sets this design apart. You are following a similar layout to the unaunahi with curved lines in groups of three, except they're connected at the top. These are called rito rito, which are young shoots of a flax plant. The word punga werewere translates to spider, so this pattern represents spider webs. It symbolises whakpapa or genealogy and family values such as maintaining the well-being of the whānau and wider community. And that's a punga werewere. Do it and use the sound, I'm keen to see how you go. We're going to draw one of the most simple and full patterns, the ahu ahu mataroa. Drawing this one is fairly simple, it's like drawing a ladder. One tip I would give is if you're drawing without a ruler, like I am, anchor your hand to the page so it makes it more steady. Other than that, the meaning is what I wanted to cover. It is widely used across Aotearoa, so it isn't associated with a specific region. It shows talent or achievement in athleticism, but can also represent a new challenge. A lot of these patterns vary in meaning based on the context or medium being used, but that is the ahu ahu mataroa. Alright, we're going to draw a hikiwaua. Start off with a rectangle, double lining the sides and sectioning it off evenly and fairly narrow. Draw a V on each of the lines and extend it out, angled to reach the midway point of your sections. Now cross over the lines, starting at the top corner of the section and finishing at the other pattern. And that is the base of your hikiwaua done. Just line and add shading. This pattern is from the Taranaki region and derived from a mackerel or herring tail. Its general meaning is prosperity or wealth, as many patterns are if the ocean is associated with it. And that is how to draw a hikawawa. I'm going to show you how to draw a koiri. 
Start with the top part of the kuru, then add the bottom as it helps keep things even. Then draw another kuru with it, touching the head and the body or kawai of the kuru. Draw another one with the space you have. Erase the lines which you're touching and then outline it. Leave the gaps. Add some shading and you would commonly see infill designs in the shapes which are not the kurus. This pattern is from the Tairafati region. It means to flourish or self-reflect as well as nurture. Do it and use the sound I'm keen to see how you go. Alright, we're going to draw a whakati. I'll start off with a rectangle, double lining the edges and section it off evenly depending on how large you want the design to be. Extend out the edges before halfway and meet at the top a little above the section. Continue this till the space is filled and add a line at the peak of each diamond sort of shape. Now line and add shading. This infill design is attributed to warriors and everything they encompass, so strength, courage and honour, as well as possible past battles or current battles. It has been paralleled to a dogskin cloak or dog teeth pattern. And that is a Pakasi. Māori designs and patterns, lesson fa. Hi, I'm going to show you how to draw a manaya. Start with the head, drawing a circle at the top and a semicircle similar size connected to it. Plus a small semicircle between them. This is your face, mouth and nose. Then you want to draw the body, connecting it to the mouth you drew. I'm curving the body in a kuru shape and connecting it back to the head. And then draw a circle for the shoulder and add the arm so it looks kind of like a comma. Then I draw the hand for the curve a bit like an A. Add an eye and that is the base of your manaya. You can add surface patterns like una unahi I showed you how to draw. The design is based on birds which are seen as a very Vehicles for the souls of the dead as they travel to the afterlife. They are usually depicted in profile, and some feel this is because the Manaya is half in the spirit world and half in this world. It represents balance between the sky, the earth, and the sea. All Manaya serve as guardians and givers of omens, to where one can protect from evil and connect the wearer with the souls of the dead. And that is how to draw a simple Manaya. Duet and use the sound, I'm keen to see how you go. Alrighty, we're gonna draw a Mangopare. First, draw a square, then split the middle so it gives you two even rectangles. Draw two kurus in these rectangles, touching the edges and reflecting each other. Erase the lines which are intersecting and line it. You can connect the kurus together or leave them separate. I have connected mine together, and that is the base of your design. If you would like, you can also add in four designs that I have shown you in the past three videos. This design is derived from the hammerhead shark and represents strength, power, leadership, determination, courage and wealth. As the design I've chosen to infill is the pakati, it further enhances the very same meaning. And that is how to draw a mangopare.